Hello and welcome back to Talking Europe. The holiday season is upon us and that looks like a good time to examine the strange relationship that many of us have with tourism. We often say that a particular city or coastline has been ruined by tourists, but we've probably enjoyed those same places ourselves at some point, despite the scowls and grumblings of local residents. After all, there's a reason why people flock to Florence and not to a dusty desert. So should we be limiting something that we've benefited from? And if so, how? I'm joined by MEPs from some of the most touristy countries in the EU. Zeljana Zofko is a Croatian MEP from the European People's Party. She was also Croatia's permanent representative in the World Tourism Organization and the permanent representative to the UN's Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. Welcome to you. I'm also very pleased to welcome Jose Ramon Bauza Diaz, Spanish MEP who's in the Committee on Transport and Tourism and former president of the Balearics region in Spain. Welcome to you as well. Uh, thank you so much. So, uh, Zeliana Zofka, let's start with you. You've just been to uh, Dubrovnik and Split, which are some of the most uh, known hotspots in Croatia. What was your impression? Was it just overwhelmed by tourists? Um, I live in Split and uh, I was in Dubrovnik for uh, Dubrovnik Forum that uh, we have uh, just organized, Croatian government, uh, and we are happy to, to, to see many tourists in Dubrovnik. Um, the, uh, luckily, we've, uh, I think that this season we will complete the figures that we had at uh, the best time, but uh, also at this uh, point we are trying to manage uh, this um, overwhelming number of mm. tourists and as well we are uh, talking on the new strategy how to deal uh, with, uh, uh, with masses of tourists that are coming and we are sometimes uh, we are also a victim of our popularity, but mm. luckily still Croatia is managing that very well and we are, we are, we are trying to, 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 to get somewhere um, in order to have uh, and to balance the life of local people and, and to please all the tourists that are coming. We'll come back to the victims of popularity, but just uh, what's the situation like in, uh, obviously you know the Balearic so well, uh, do, do you get the sense that it's, it's just too much or I mean, there's too much of a negative impact that doesn't, that sort of cancels out any benefits, or how does it? How do you see it? No, for the Balearics, yeah. Mallorca, yeah. Menorca, yeah. Ibiza, and Formentera is, uh, is absolutely neat, and we all live directly or mm. indirectly uh, for the tourism sector. Mm. In fact, all the companies, uh, small companies, small and medium-sized companies, mm. even the small shops, they are always looking forward, and as well, they are making a big effort in order to be in the with the best quality services and the best brands in order to 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 welcome the thousand and million people who is visiting our islands and as well the whole of Spain. So we are absolutely well prepared. The, the tourism sector is uh, absolutely well prepared at, with the maximum standard of quality and the way uh, what we are doing okay. at the moment. So, so what about some of the less rosy aspects, the, the, the rises in rents, for example, uh, the inflation, all of these things which have been linked to over-tourism? Well, you know, uh, obviously, we are in a, not the best economical situation, but we had to take into account that thanks to the tourism sector, we had go forward uh, uh, the last uh, crisis uh, situation that we had lived not only in Europe, but as well in the different member states. Thanks to tourism, mm -hmm. it has been the, the, how to say, the, 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 the motor, so the, motor the, the engine, in mm -hmm. order to get out of the crisis. So thanks to the tourism, Tourism is almost represent for Spain almost 15 of the GDP, 50% of the GDP, and in Europe 10, 12 independent countries of the GDP. So thanks to tourism, we are getting that possibility. Mm. And obviously there is inflection, but I can tell you that I have been in different airports uh, and tourism airports in the, around Spain. They are mm. all full of people from different countries, from different uh, regions in the world. Uh, we are absolutely, absolutely welcoming there to, to our, to our uh, country. J just some thoughts on uh, preserving cultural heritage, because I know that's something you've worked on a lot before, Zeliana Zofka. How do you do that when you've got these huge numbers of tourists? 
But we uh, we have a strict laws. We strict, uh, we have a strict law and conservators who are and minister of culture who are really uh, following what is going on and that the construction cannot be in the old uh, old part of the towns. Mm -hmm. um, we are also managing uh, this uh, high popularity, as I already said, mm -hmm. um, because we are very well known for uh, our beautiful cultural heritage, mm -hmm. and uh, many of the high level tourists are coming to to. See see that but the the management of the of the cultural uh, heritage and uh, and the city centers is going very well so mm. i don't uh, i don't see the problem in that the problem what we are uh, what what i already said on hype uh, victim of the popularity is uh, unfortunately for the local people because uh, yeah. they cannot afford mm. to buy anymore in the mm. city center like for example i live in split in the city mm. center and for young people it's very difficult to buy the place so split has has become like Monaco in a way, yeah. like mm. Monte Carlo, that you, uh, for a younger generation, cannot afford to be there because everyone wants to come and live. And there's no Where countermeasures. The, the authorities just say, "Well, that's the free market." You know, that's but how that's it is. The, you know, that's the that's the price of uh, to to be beautiful and to be uh, also safe and secure. <laughs> and everyone wants to come and live there. Uh, so there, this this is something also uh, the problem as well that we are having is where are people uh, who are going to work in the services where they will live because mm. the prices are so uh, so dire and so high. Yeah. Uh, just uh, on some of your work here in the Parliament, José Ramón Balta, you, you're promoting, or you'd like to promote something called the European tourism brand to have a sort of cross-national uh, sort of idea in a, in a sense. This, this was exactly was my proposal in order to create a European tourism brand. Why do I want to do that? Mm -hmm. Because first of all, we know that the competences that belong to the member state or even to the regions, uh, I know that quite good. But even that, uh, for that, we, we know that there are another markets that they don't understand that Europe is what it is. So mm -hmm. we are here as a brand, but we can afford uh, to bring people that they can go to split to Madrid, to Rome, to Paris, to Berlin, to many different places. And we, if we try to, to create this policy in tourism, because here at the European level, we don't have any tourism policy. That is it's, one it's of the main lacks. It's a national competence. Right? Exactly. Yeah. But we can work together in order that somebody from, from Asia, from Middle East, from mm -hmm. uh, USA, they can come to Europe thinking that they can link different destinations and the whole of Europe as a brand in itself. So yeah. it is better to, to, to think in a whole European body that mm. you think is 20 different European bodies. So, but what does the tourist get out of that? Some kind of reduced price for traveling to different locations within the same brand? Is, is that mm. how it would be? This is not the object, the target. The target is that to think that coming to Europe is yeah. bigger that mm. going just to one single destination as a member state. So yeah. I think we, we need to think bigger mm. and we can afford and, big and, and give more possibilities and more options to mm. smaller countries that they are not so involved in tourism mm. because, for example, Croatia, Spain, France, Italy, Greece, <laughs> we know a little bit about tourism, but there are other countries that they are not so involved just because they are in different sectors. So we can make a big brand and bring many people to know it's different destination and how beautiful Europe is in no, itself. I would, I would go, I would, uh, it's a very interesting proposal, but I would go from with some story that I heard in Dubrovnik recently and the split, people are complaining that Booking.com and Airbnb are taking biggest part of the uh, cake. So what? Uh, why not uh, starting and organizing by the cities and by the region or by the state, uh, make creating their own platform for the, for the whole uh, package of the arrangement, like uh, instead of uh, giving giving it to somewhere else where you don't control uh, neither the taxes nor who is uh, renting it and where is this money going? Is it going to the local community? So European Commission must start thinking. We have to start thinking about these issues. How to create a platform in a city so that the whole profit goes and stays with the local population and then they will have a stake mm. in, the, in the final product uh, and we will also have the incentives like some other cities have uh, are giving to uh, encourage local population and give them some sort of tax reduction to stay and to remain there.
What about that point on doing more to promote the interests of local residents at the same time as developing this brand that you talk yes, about? Yes, you know, and it's a quite interesting thing that people have to know that, for example, at the European level, the European Parliament, we have a committee that is tourism and transport committee, mm. both together in yeah. order to know how to manage, because tourism, it's absolutely unbelievable to do tourism without any kind of uh, connectivity. So, mm. But at the Commission level, the European Commission, they have transport in on one side and Tourism is one of the 15, 14 uh, sectors inside the uh, Commerce uh, co commission, commission. So there are different ways of thinking. Here at the European Parliament, we think in a whole together. Tourism and transport, you cannot think about one or the other if they are not together. But mm -hmm. the problem is that we have different kinds of policy because at the Commission, they don't think in that way. So they mm -hmm. think tourism is one thing, and transport is another one. So one of the important things is to work together. I want to. Say, yeah. I think it's one where we have to do as an institutions an important work together. I agree. They have to yeah. consult more with the local people, he, people who are living the tourism, people who yeah. are living the daily life, and also who are living in uh, how to preserve the cultural heritage, how to preserve the way of life. Because when we are putting uh, uh, cities or monuments on world cul cultural her heritage, one of the conditions is to preserve the way of life. Mm -hmm. So in, if we don't do that, it will. We will just have museums that will, and people will lose the interest in uh, in coming and seeing how they are living. Like starting from Portugal or Baleari or to Croatia, they, they would want to see our fishermen fishing in the morning and having the beautiful uh, and, and coming back in the evening or early in the morning. This is the whole experience that you are coming and paying for. And otherwise we will all become like a chain store or Zara or whatever and we will, uh, we will not have uh, different experiences and different tastes and different uh, memories. I think that's a good place to end uh, and I'd like to wish all of our viewers and my guests, happy holidays wherever you're going to be this summer, whether it's a hot spot or somewhere a bit off the beaten track. Thank you so much to Jose Ramon Balthadies and Ziliana Zofko, and that's all for this episode of Talking Europe.